Welcome everybody to the SoCal Car Scene Podcast, the exclusive place for coverage of car culture in Southern California and the personalities that drive it. I'm your co-host, Big J Marash, and also the technical director and producer of this show. This show is sponsored by SoCal Classic Car Storage and SeaTech Battery Chargers. On today's show, we have a very special guest, Wade Kawasaki, the president and CEO of Legendary Companies. But you know, I'm not going to be the one always talking on this show. We also have my co-host and my father, Dean Marash. So whenever you're ready, Dad, take it away. Hey, Jay, thanks a lot. And welcome, everyone, to the SoCal Car Scene. We're honored to have as our guest today, Wade Kawasaki. Wade is a passionate car collector, avid race enthusiast, experienced Concord judge, speaker, and respected automotive expert. Wade has over 35 years of experience in the automotive industry, and is the president and CEO of Legendary Companies. In his executive role, Kawasaki oversees the 14 brands and six operating companies, which include Coker Tire, Universal Vintage Tire Company, Phoenix Race Tires, Wheel Vintiques, Roadster Wire Wheels, more, and The Great Race. Legendary Companies has distribution in over 60 countries, and they are the largest manufacturer of classic tires and wheels in the world. In addition to his role at Legendary Companies, Kawasaki is the SEMA immediate past chairman of the board of directors, where he still has a role in making important decisions to benefit the $52 billion automotive aftermarket. His contributions to the automotive aftermarket have been recognized with many awards, including his induction into the coveted SEMA Hall of Fame. Wade is also a keen collector of vintage, classic, and rare cars. Wade. Thanks for joining us on the SoCal Car Scene. Oh, you're very welcome. And thanks for the very gracious uh, uh, introduction there. I, I, I sound really old, I think. Uh, <laughs> Not as old as Dean, though. So That's yeah. a good point. Okay. Okay. That's right. I, 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 I think I'm, I'm probably getting close to him. Yeah, wow. Yeah, That's hard. A, I hope that doesn't happen to you, Wade. Uh, so you were a native SoCaler or spent some time in SoCal, right? No, I'm a native SoCaler. I grew up in Gardena, California. You know, my dad at his uh, first gas station in downtown LA. So yeah, this is uh, something very near and dear to me. So awesome. Thank you for what you do. Appreciate hey, it. You know, we're, I'm always excited about where people start their car journey. I think everybody is, but yeah. gas stations, you know, at the, in the right time of this great country, guys that own gas stations we're living the life, right? Was that the case with your father? Was he a very respected and successful businessman because he had a gas station? I don't know about respected and, uh, and uh, successful, but I do know that uh, the neighborhood around him really adored him. I bet. Uh, my dad came uh, from old school. He was born and raised in Hawaii, uh, came to Los Angeles without any real education, just knew how to work on cars. And, uh, you know, basically worked at this gas station for a long time. And when the worked so hard, seven days a week, when the owner retired, yeah. uh, he was very kind and, and allowed my dad to kind of take over. And he became the owner of that gas station in downtown L.A. Well, you know, it's funny about gas stations, right? I grew, I grew up in this era when we transitioned to the first 7-Eleven. So you used to hang out at the gas station yes. until the 7-Elevens came on board. And then all of a sudden, here's a place with comic books uh gum right. and candy and baseball cards and slurpees and so we all kind of migrated away from the gas station yeah. into this brand new world of the 7-eleven <laughs> yeah well i'll tell you some of my most vivid memories are all of my dad's friends hanging out at the gas station and when they would finally close the doors the you know, refrigerator with the Coke machine would come open and the oh, beer that's stored in the Coke machine uh, would be pulled <laughs> out. I always told my dad he'd make more money selling the beer and giving the gasoline away. For free. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Hey, so do you ever, ever have your, uh, like a pinch yourself moment? You've been able to uh, turn your passion for cars into this incredible career. Do you, do you ever take a moment to kind of uh, say, wow, this is pretty awesome stuff? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I have a pinch myself moment every morning when I wake up. I am so blessed uh, that I'm able to do what I'm passionate about. You know, I've never had to really work hard a day in my life. I work long hours, but uh, it, it's what I love to do. And, you know, to be able to, to be in that industry and, and do what I love to do with people that I love to work with that are also passionate car guys, it, it's been a, just an amazing journey. I, I really can't 
tell you a better way to spend a career than the way I've been able to do. And then, you know, to kind of be able to give back uh, as a SEMA volunteer has been uh, another really special part of my life. So it's, uh, it's been a great ride. I'm really enjoying it. Well, keep riding. And uh, I know which tires and wheels you're going to pick for that ride. I'm just guessing. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. That's probably a pretty good segue. I didn't plan it that way, but why don't you tell our listeners and viewers a little about Legendary Companies that you're the president and CEO of? Right. So Legendary Companies is kind of the holding company for a number of different manufacturers within our space, within the restoration space. And, you know, I've got some great partners at Irving Place Capital that have been able to uh, provide us with the capital and a lot of uh, assistance in, in being able to kind of take us to that next level, right? To really utilize best practices in business and be able to bring those best practices to some great, albeit legendary companies in our industry. So, you know, we're kind of on acquisition mode right now, looking for other companies to join the legendary companies. Um, and it is legendary companies, not legendary brands. We're not here to accumulate brands. We're here really to come alongside great companies that are doing great work and serving our industry. And hopefully between all of us, they can help us do what we do better and we can help uh, them do what they do better. So it's been, a, it's been a great ride. Our passion and desire is to make sure that collectors and passionate car guys have the correct wheels and tires and restoration products in order to be able to keep their passion out on their road. You know, it's pretty hard to wear out tires unless you're driving it. Well, you know, I, I won't go into my collection because uh, every time I do, I, I get scolded for not finishing any of my collection. <laughs> and uh, I know who will scold me. He happens to be on this call with me. His name I won't reveal, but it's Jay. Uh, but I, I have a Corvair. He tells uh, me I don't follow through with anything. Huh? <laughs> I have a, That's a father's job. Yeah, right. I have a 62 Corvair and a 55 Pontiac Safari wagon. And some of the best parts on those cars are the Coker tires. Well, thanks. We, we really appreciate it. It's, it's a lot of hard work, but uh, you know what? We want to make sure that you have authentic tires that are made to modern standards. And so, you know, all of our tires are, are either built in the original molds or we'll, remake, or we'll actually build new molds, but we build them to the exact specifications that they were when they first came out. Okay. So you get that great authentic look but with all modern manufacturing techniques and processes and materials. So make sure that you have a safe tire that, that is uh, period correct and will bring the most value right to your vehicle. So it's an important thing for us. It sounds like you kind of revealed the secret sauce, which I was kind of curious about, but it also, it, it, it seems like there's, you know, not a lot of barriers to entry, but not a lot of people have tried and succeeded. And, you know, they're, you're just like the, the house brand almost in that arena is there something other than what we just talked about or is it just your commitment to the community and, and the car uh world as a whole i mean you know how well, how would you how would you describe what what keeps you so successful in that particular company yeah you know what we really have harold coker the founder of coker tire to thank for that it was his desire originally just to help his friends out to be able to keep their cars on the road and he started acquiring these molds and uh, you know those few molds that he acquired and started building uh, tires out of became thousands of molds and uh, now it's our great privilege to be able to make sure that we can keep our great collector vintage classic and hot rods out on the road and you know we even have some tires that you know we really don't make any money on but we know there's an important part of our industry or that is passionate collectors that need those tires and we're going to make sure that we provide them with those tires yeah i wonder if that's my corvair no <laughs> <laughs> 13 it'll need more than tire on it'll need more than coker tires they stay on the road there i got a plan for that car settle down over there technical <laughs> director hey there's a great corvair club in southern california i'm sure right? you're part of it yeah, we're, we're debating on, you know, we've had great guests on the show. One, we had Michael Breen. He's the CEO of EV West down in San Diego, and he electrifies everything. So that's right. one possibility for that program. Oh, nice. And then the other possibility is uh, putting in uh, some Porsche goodies, like some 996 donor stuff, maybe get a nice Porsche engine and some <laughs> Porsche running gear. So, you know, we've got some ideas kicking around. Who knows? Yeah, we it? even have fun names like the the what is it? The Porsche the Porsche Air. 
Porsche. Uh, Porsche. <laughs> right? The the Porsche. Porsche. <laughs> Uh, the poor bear yeah the poor man yeah well all kinds of good ideas but the problem is you know what it's just a matter of time sometimes for us car guys because we love our job so much like you do yeah you know, we don't we don't have the time for projects like we used yeah. to when we were young you know absolutely hey, so tell us a little bit about you know what's going on in your business as it relates to this COVID-19 situation it's been very difficult obviously for everyone in, in the world and certainly in our country and all us car guys, it's had a big impact on the car scene, but tell us how it's affected you, particularly in the area of your companies uh, that are inside the legendary portfolio. Right. Well, it's affected us in, in a number of different ways. And I, I think the first way was, of course, in early March, business just like nearly stopped. It was really a scary time. Uh, we reacted to that very quickly. Uh, and then probably about the second week of April, I think, you know, people, a couple of things happened. People were kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired sitting at home. <laughs> and then the other thing is now they're not going on vacations. They're not going out to restaurants. So they're spending a lot more time in the garage being able to work on these new cars, on these classic and vintage cars they got. Right. Well, actually, business started to pick up, and it's been very, awesome. very good. It, it's been very brisk. But one of the things that really – it really makes me feel good is there are so many new customers and uh, you know way more than normal and you know this is the the people that maybe never thought of restoring a vintage or a classic car but now that they have the time at home and, and a garage there they've decided they're going to take that up as a as a new hobby so what we hope is that this is going to create a great new base of passionate car collectors moving forward. You know, I think we've seen a lot of that in our business. Jay and I have been very busy here at uh, our SoCal Classic Car Storage. And, you know, we didn't know what uh, impact it would have on the business. You know, it was a great unknown for us. Right. But because there's so much time on car people's hands, we think that's driving the business. We also, also think that people are making moves that they otherwise normally wouldn't. So mm -hmm. upsizing, downsizing, they've got time to improve their house. So Everything goes in the garage, right? Yeah. And the cars come to us. So it's been, a, it's been an interesting time in the car world. And it's surprising when you hear your story or our story that it, it doesn't necessarily have a, a short-term negative impact. I mean, yeah, it hasn't been perfect. But I'm, I, it just sounds like you guys are real grateful that car enthusiasts have been busy. And now you've got new people in the, in the game, right? Yeah, and at the same time, we just can't wait to the, for these events and shows to fire up again. I mean, you know, we have six 52-foot tractor trailers on the road constantly going to these shows. So it was quite a blow from okay. March until now and, and into the foreseeable future, probably in a September time frame, uh, not having those shows. They're just starting to fire up again. In fact, I'm right here right now in my hotel room in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the Meekup Indy uh, nice. car auction. So Love it when these things get fired back up. Want to make sure we can get them fired back up safely. We need to get Dana Meekum on our show, right, Jay? I mean, we, we just got to reach out. I'm sure he'll say yes. I'm sure he will. Dana and Frank are, are both very generous with their time when it comes to helping the car community. Yeah, we, we just love what they do. And I'm glad you're uh, planning to uh, get actively involved with that particular show. That's a huge one. And you you I've seen your social presence. You're quite active with Meekum. It sounds like you guys have been a, a pretty active sponsor and a per active participant in their shows, right? Yeah, we're a major sponsor for Meekum. So we do some, you know, on-camera segment features uh, with them. Uh, great organization. Uh, we still work with Barry Jackson and, and uh, RM and some of the other auctions, but uh, Dana's done a really good job of bringing new customers into, you know, kind of into the fold of passionate car collectors. So if uh, because of the amount of time he spends on TV, you know, he uh, gets a lot of the folks that may not have you know, read Hot Rod Magazine or may not listen to your podcast. And so he gets those people to come on and, and get introduced in our, into our industry. He makes it very easy for someone that is not a car collector to attend the show, to bid on a car, to buy a car and to ship it home. So uh, that, that bodes well for our entire industry. That's great. And one of the things that we've been seeing lately, we've talked about on a number of our shows, is the innovation that's uh, resulted from this uh, virus. Yeah. We've seen such things as, you know, it's very popular around here called the quarantine cruises, where they're cruising right. around cities, virtual auctions. Now uh, we just, we had a great um, 
podcast all about model concor, uh, model car concourse with Andy Reid uh, arising, and all this arising from the dust or the ashes of COVID nineteen. What kind of innovations have you seen, either in your company or in yeah. the car world, that you're like going, "Wow, that's really cool, man. We should keep doing that thing." Yeah, you know, with legendary companies, we're working throughout all of our portfolio of companies and really stepping up what we do on the internet. I mean, to having our salespeople log in constantly to participate in live chats with our customers that are, are logging in, to making the buying experience really seamless for them. You know, our average cart price is about $700. So it's a pretty expensive purchase. But right. we found through COVID-19 that people are more comfortable in spending large amounts of money online than they've ever been before. So we want to make sure that experience is really good for them and they really enjoy that experience. Um, you know, from the auction standpoint, I can tell you, you know, I was just at the Eddie Van Oye Mecham auction, which was a smaller private auction, right. but then even the first weekend of the Indy Mecham auction, and there's a lot more interaction with the internet, with internet bidders. You know, before most of the action was on the floor, right? A few phone bidders, maybe one internet bidder every once yeah. in a while, but now it's actually internet bidders bidding against people on the floor, bidding against people on the phone, and then maybe two or three internet bidders bidding against each other. So it's really turned it into a, just a far reaching ability for people to purchase and to sell a classic awesome. vintage car. So it's really exciting. It's really changing behavior. It's kind of accelerated that process. Yeah, yeah bids, are the bids more competitive? I would say so. You know, I, I haven't been able to really sit down and look at it, but just anecdotally looking at, for instance, uh, the uh, Van Oy auction and the price of memorabilia uh, that was going around, I can tell you it was all out of my price range uh, very quickly. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of bidding strong. wars. Uh, yeah, the bids are strong. They are bidding wars and the bids are strong and the sell-through percentage is up. So those are all good indicators for our industry. That, that's the second data point we've got on that Andy Reid um, who was our last podcast guest, podcast guest was telling us that on these virtual auctions um, or hybrid auctions, like you mentioned, the sell through rate is uh, upwards of 70 to 80% now, and right. which is outstanding. So we're, we're happy to hear that. Um, hey, Jay, you want to tell um, the folks that are listening and watching um, how we keep all these uh, wonderful cars at SoCal Classic uh, charged up and ready to enjoy? <laughs> Man, you were really serious about that natural uh, transition there, weren't you? Well, I told you it would be natural, Wade. <laughs> but I tell you what, what is natural is that SeaTech is the best battery charger or battery maintainer, as they like to call it, um, in the industry. And they are our friends. And if you're looking for a smarter way to charge and maintain your car's battery, our friends at SeaTech lead the way in the care and maintenance of vehicle batteries. SeaTech's unparalleled knowledge and continuous investment in innovation means they offer high quality, reliable chargers that are effective, easy to use, and most importantly, safe for the user and their car's electric system. Their products actually make them the trusted company of the world's most recognizable car brands, including Audi, Bentley, BMW, Corvette, Ford, Ferrari, Maserati, Mercedes, Porsche, and so much more. Get yours today at smartercharger.com. Thanks, Jay. And Wade, let's switch gears a little bit and shift to that incredible Behemoth show that is SEMA, the Specialty Equipment Market Association. What a juggernaut that show has become. And it seems to be an integral part of every car company's marketing and sales strategies. What's your take on the phenomenal growth and the importance of SEMA to the car industry as a whole? Thanks. You know, I'll answer that in a second. I would like to just mention something about SeaTech. because oh, right. I, yeah, I, I use the product myself. I honestly, I have two cars in my garage at home that both came factory with a SeaTech charger. In nice. Them, branded by those factory. One is a Ford GT and the other one's a Jaguar Project 7 that both of them, right from the factory, came with a SeaTech charger. I also have vehicles in my, in my showroom in Los Angeles, my showroom in Chattanooga, all on SeaTech chargers do a great job of not only keeping the charge level up, but really conditioning the battery. So those batteries last a lot longer. You know, I've got a lot of invested in those batteries and I used to constantly be rotating, rotating them and changing out for new batteries. And uh, CTEC's really solved that problem for me. So just wanted to give a little shout out to CTEC. They got a great product and 
I use them myself. Right hey, on. Yeah, and that legitimizes uh, our ad there that we do. We aren't just <laughs> we aren't just blowing smoke <laughs> and telling we you that CTEX hey, Jay, battery chargers are pretty good. So, you know, we want to talk about SEMA a little bit. Uh, right. Tell us, you know, what's your take on what, where, what it's become? It's so such a uh, you know, big part of the car world, right? Yeah, so you know, being on the board of directors now, gosh, probably 20, 30 years when you uh, uh, get it all. I was, I was elected to my first term on the board when I was 36, so very young. I uh, was able to watch a lot of changes in those, in those years. But what I, what I can tell you is the strength of that organization are, are twofold. I, I think number one, the strength of that organization is its members. We have great members that really depend on the SEMA show to bring innovation, to bring new products, and to create the networking that it takes in a, in a passion industry. Yeah. And the second thing is just a great staff led by Chris Kirsting, our CEO and president, just a phenomenally smart guy, dedicated to the automotive aftermarket. And I mean, that's a guy that spends, that spends sleepless nights because of us. And, and man, I, I can't uh, tell you how much I appreciate the efforts uh, that Chris Kirsting does, that Bill Miller, his executive VP, and the entire team at uh, SEMA. And so that, that's really the heart of why it's been so successful. And uh, you know, we plan on keeping our foot on the gas and doing the same with PRI. As uh, I'm sure you know, we are very fortunate uh, to be able to recruit uh, Jamie Meyer as our new president for PRI. Awesome. So really gonna work real hard at serving that racing community and being able to give them the products and services that they need to make that industry thrive as well. Wow. Well, it's, it's great to have somebody that's been so involved in SEMA as our guest. Uh, you know, we've got a variety of uh, interested uh, tentacles, if you will, in SEMA. One, we have a customer that built his car and it's here in our facility for the most part. And uh, he built it by hand in his garage and he launched it at Toyo Tire Booth. Just a beautiful car. And, you know, so guys that are individuals that are first timers, this is such an important part. All the way to manufacturers like legendary companies. We're going to be uh, hopefully seeing you this year uh, if all works out. We're also planning, Jay and I, if it works out, we're going to be with the Factory 5 racing team. Uh, they've got a, you know, they have a presence there. And, and we're talking about doing some live streaming. Uh, you know, for SoCal car scene. But tell us, uh, Wade, you know, uh, can Jay and I plan on going there? Our plans, for our plans, Lewis, give us an update for 2020 November SEMA. So that's your sneaky question uh, to get me to uh, commit to that. I, I can tell you this, uh, SEMA's mission statement is to help our members' businesses succeed and prosper and everything we do we want to draw a straight line to that goal and so naturally part of that goal and, and a very important part of that goal is to make sure that our members businesses are safe and that they're healthy and they're able to be able to take advantage of the SEMA show so what I can tell you our thought process is on this we just had our booth space drawing a few weeks ago and we had over 2,000 SEMA manufacturers that are saying, hey, we need the opportunity to show our new products to get America back to work again and to do it at the SEMA show. So in order to be able to make sure that we fulfill our mission statement, of course we wanna do it safely and let me do this under the caveat that as of everything we know today, we, would, we are dedicated to being able to serve our industry by providing with them with this world-class trade show in a very safe manner. So is it gonna be the same SEMA show as we've had all the years? Probably not, but we'll make sure that we follow all the CDC, WHO, state and local guidelines to make sure that we keep our members safe. And as long as we can provide a venue to get America back to work, in a safe manner, we're going to do that. Jay, we've done 26 of these podcasts now or so once a week for the last seven or eight months. And SEMA comes out every time we have a guest. Uh, right. Very nice. There's a SEMA thread with everything that we do and talk about. <laughs> and, and, yet, and yet, I haven't gone. Huh. <laughs> I've never gone to SEMA. <laughs> well, uh, you know, they're going to do everything they can, Jay. So that's what you need to know, and, and we'll do what we can. <laughs> well, you know, oh, I mean, the less I go to Las Vegas, probably the better. 
I am uh, I am in theology school after all. Shout out Vanguard, go Lions. Go Lions. <laughs> yeah. So you know the good news, Jay, is SEMA is so overwhelming. You can spend five days and five nights there and yeah. never, you know, never see the whole show. So don't worry about it. We're going to keep you busy. And uh, Coker Tires would love to have you in their booth. That wouldn't be a problem either. You know? <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of legendary Jay, companies. Man, and Jay's all over the place. <laughs> hey, speak, speaking of uh, legendary companies and Coker Tires, are you going to have something special if, if SEMA does happen? Do, do, you, do you have a secret uh, rollout you want to share with us? Because, you know, we're, we're not going to share with anybody. It's just between the three of us. <laughs> yeah, just between us girls. We're not going right, right, right. to share anything. Yeah, SEMA is the, the time that we unveil things. So we have all of our new products ready to unveil there. Uh, they're all under lockdown with uh, the media up until the time that we have our press conferences at SEMA. So sorry, I, I can't divulge <laughs> the things. My marketing department, Marlon Moore, who's our director of marketing, is, is probably <laughs> is probably sweating bullets right now thinking I'm going to say something, but uh, <laughs> if he's having it in real time right now, don't say it. Don't say it. He's probably like these junior <laughs> podcasters. I'm not worried about them. They're yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, just, yeah, this is, this is the, this is uh, the disadvantage to uh, having all these zoom uh, virtual uh, podcasts. Yeah. We can't actually, uh, torture our guests into divulging <laughs> secret I know, information I know. we got to come up with our own technology platform i know I right I virtual, know. virtual waterboarding that'd be cool yeah right right yeah <laughs> well i'll tell you what if, if jay and i are there which we very well hope to be in all things uh come together and like you said in a, a different safer format we can't wait to see you there uh, we'll come in and say hi and uh, introduce ourselves so uh, we can meet face to face Thank you. So looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be out there with a whole bunch of our, our best friends, uh, you know, kind of enjoying uh, each other and the, the networking that will still take place and uh, doing some business as well. We just can't wait uh, to get uh, all of America back to work. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jay, why don't you uh, tell everybody about our other important sponsor on this show today, SoCal Classic Car Storage. I don't know if it's necessarily important, but we definitely need to pay the bills around here. So as my dad was saying, uh, this podcast is brought to you by SoCal Classic Car Storage. Our facilities are in the lovely city of Laguna Hills and definitely focused on lovely. Uh, we offer private and secure white glove vehicle storage and an extensive concierge service. In addition to storage, our expert sales staff, which includes me, Dean, and Eric Hansen, and also uh, John, uh, we offer consignment services for those looking to sell their cars. And so for more information, visit us in Laguna Hills, right behind Furniture Row, or at SoCalCarStorage.com, or on Facebook, at facebook.com slash SoCal Car Storage. All right. So, you know, another event, uh, right, that's part of your full portfolio. And I need you to kind of explain. I, I, I know about the great race. It's been going on for, gosh, for seems like close to 30 years or so, maybe more. Yeah. Um, is it a, is it more than just an event or is it such a big event that it actually is some kind of an entity beyond just the event itself? What a, what a great story that is. So give us a little bit of background and, you know, uh, the story on uh, the great race. Yeah, you know, it literally takes us the entire year. In fact, we're working on the 2022 great race now, the beginning of that. So it's wow. really a full-time job. Jeff Stum is our race director of the great race. And, you know, for those that don't aren't familiar with time and endurance rallies, that's what it is. It's, uh, you know, we have a route uh, that they will follow and they get very encrypted instructions to be able to follow that route. I might say go three miles for at 30 miles an hour and make a right turn, but it won't tell them any what street it's on. They really have to pay attention to how fast they're going, how far they're going, and how long it takes them to do that even down to how long it takes them to go around a corner, to decelerate to the corner, to accelerate in the corner. They have to do all that math in their head. They can't use uh, any kind of electronics to do that. Adjust their speed so they can make it to that next checkpoint on time, right? And they don't know until the end of the day how well they did. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I thought, oh, this doesn't sound that hard the first time I tried a rally. And, 
and I did that and I thought, wow, if I can get within 30 seconds, right? 30 seconds um, of a checkpoint, that'd be great. If I'm within a couple of minutes uh, the whole day, I think I, I've succeeded. And I'll tell you, I had a problem doing that, right? To be able to get it down to 30 seconds. But uh, when I looked at the leaderboard, and saw that people were getting aces, meaning they were 0, 0.0 Less seconds second. off, or two or three seconds off, and maybe seven to 10 seconds off the entire day. I mean, that was mind boggling. I, I, that's a skill set that I, I don't think I'll ever have, and it's really fun watching these racers and the precision uh, that they're able to achieve with all these vintage and classic cars. But really the best thing about it, it's this traveling circus that goes from town, small town USA to small town USA, yeah. the beautiful back roads of this beautiful country. And uh, you know, people will line the roads I've to seen watch that. these cars go by. There's lines of folks as we go into a, uh, as we go into a town, big to-dos going on as they get to see these classic vintage cars. And you know, what we'd like to say is we bring a museum from town to town to town, focused on you know small towns that may not get the opportunity to be able to do that uh, so it so. really is a traveling car circus where you got to get the, you got to get in advance of where it's going to show up so you got to have banners and hoopla yeah. and organize the crowd and you know you get a lot of prep work right and uh, all, all of that uh, we have, yeah. between racers support crews competition staff volunteer staff and our paid staff there's over 500 people going from town to town no, to kidding. town. Okay. Yeah. And then we have advanced teams that when when they're at one town, they're advanced teams at the next town, getting that town ready. So yeah, it's a it's really an exciting process. It's the, you know, it's it's the it's the time of a lifetime that you can actually participate in every year. Yeah. Well it, I just, it's quite amazing to me like how what kind of cars people do it in and yeah. and how uncomfortable that must be for some people to do it in like 1930 styles cars oh we have folks that win in 1918 cars that are open cars and they're driving these open cars with Goggles. very small windshields and no tops and no and no side glass through pouring driving rain we even had them one year driving through the snow in those open cars so wow so got that that reminds that, that you know what it reminds me of is and this is I guess you and wade's generation but i grew up on old cartoons got that wacky races element to it you know yeah. <laughs> i love that cartoon that's good was there a dog yeah. in that you and your dad have to jump in that Corvair and do the great race in 2021. <laughs> I think that would blow some minds. So what happens when the cars break down? Who take, you know, do you have to have a mechanic as your co-pilot or do you count on these towns to help you out? I, I've always wondered about how these uh, classic vintage cars are going 17, 1800 miles and making it. Exactly. And, and they don't all make it, obviously. Oh, okay. But uh, we, we provide a couple of things. We provide a trail trailer that follows the racers. So if somebody breaks down and they can't fix it on the road, and they do have mechanics that are co-drivers, if they can't fix it, then we'll load it up on the trailer and we'll oh, okay. take it to the next stop. And the most interesting, beautiful thing in the world happens, and I, don't know, I, I, I shouldn't say it only happened to car guys, but I've only seen it happen to car guys, is that car will pull up into the Park Fume area, of the displays with all the other cars broken down and every uh, literally all the other competitors will rush to their aid they'll work all night long in a parking lot or on the grass trying to fix that competitor's car so he can compete the next day <laughs> well that, fact, must be, that must be part of the fun it, you know? it is i'll tell you that kind of camaraderie i don't know where else it happens it, uh, but it's really beautiful last year we had an old model t blow up an engine yeah. It just happened that another competitor didn't have a spare engine, but was actually transporting an engine for a friend. Uh, no, I'm sorry, transporting the engine for himself back to his home. So it wasn't there for his car, but it was just there in a crate ready to go home. He saw that they had blown an engine. He let them borrow the engine and 13 competitive crew members helped put that engine in. They got it started up and they're back on the race the next day. Uh -huh. Wow, that's quite a story. Well, it's uh, you know what? It's I think that's a, a, another thing that's on everybody's bucket car bucket list, and it's certainly on mine. I I've, I grew up in the well. I was born in Tacoma, Washington. I 
I was there till I was five and spent a lot of time. But didn't the race used to end there or some years it does? I know your routes have changed. Yeah, so we we run a different route every year. Oh, okay. uh, in fact, I think it was might have been last year we went through Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's it's really nice. It allows people to see different areas of this beautiful country of ours. We did Route 66 one year, uh, which was just an absolute historic uh, run. You know, we so we've done east to west, west to east, north to south. We've done it every uh, every which way we can. It makes it really exciting for all the competitors and it gives the opportunity for all these small towns to be able to experience these classic and vintage cars. What, uh, what car did you try it out in? I, I'm curious, were you, um, what kind of car were you in? So I, I actually tried it out in my 32. No kidding. <laughs> that seems like a good car to do it in. Kind of and a resto my, 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 And then my wife, Rose, and our marketing director, who I already mentioned, Marla Moore, actually did a local rally in, in my wife's 71 uh, Charger. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so it's anywhere, and, and those cars can be from the teens all the way up in, until the late 60s. So it's, a, it's an exciting race. And then well, it sounds like I want to, depending on how old the car is. Well, it sounds like something I want to do with Jay so he could be forced to be with me all day. 24/7 I tomorrow. am forced to be with you all day. What, what, what difference is that? Well, night times too. We probably have to get a, well, anyway, that's, that's, <laughs> night that's, that's probably too You hard. call me, Jay, the business is 24 hours yeah, a day. That's right. Yeah, good point. <laughs> the, the one thing you're going to like best about this, Jay, if you're the navigator, your dad's the driver, you get to, for the entire time you're in the car, you're tell, you get to tell your dad what to do and he's got to listen. Oh no! Well, that well, I guess we're never gonna do it because there's no way Dean's gonna go for that. <laughs> Scratch that off the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, that sounds like a lot of fun, and we uh, we know that that one has probably too been impacted by this lovely uh, COVID thing. And uh, last last time I heard, I think early July is it's moved out to 2020 and one is. Is that correct? Way to that's, give us an update. Yeah, that's correct. So the, the great race was originally scheduled in June. And so obviously uh, that wasn't going to happen. And so we, we made an attempt to postpone it into August. And uh, we did that with the support of our sponsors. You know, Haggerty and Hemmings are just amazing sponsors. That's and right. they, they so wanted everyone to get back on the road, but making sure that we got everybody back on the road safely. And so they were supportive of us moving that date out. But as we got closer to that date, and we've got so many, uh, you know, reoccurrences uh, of uh, COVID, we just all came together as a, as a you know, decision-making body, Dano over at Hemmings and, and McKeel at uh, Haggerty, and just got together on the phone call and said, you know what, uh, although we want to get America back on the road, we want people enjoying their classic cars, we want to make sure that they're doing it safely. So we'll postpone out to... Uh, June of 2021. Fair enough. And I think it's a right call. We, we've got a big car show south of us, about 10, 15 minutes south of us in San Clemente. It's the, uh, so, is it the SoCal um, South OC Cars and Coffee, right, Jay? That's South OC Cars and Coffee. And, you know, that show has gotten over a thousand cars now on a Saturday uh, morning, every Saturday morning. And it, it finally got started again, probably a month, month and a half ago when things were trending down. And unfortunately, they just sent out a notice yesterday that uh, un you're going to have to close again. So right. it's just so hard for car people to stay home, I think, especially on weekends and not get their cars out and share with other people. This is the hardest thing to do, I think, for true car fanatics. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. But the one thing that we're seeing and in, in talking to our customers is, you know, of course, you don't need a car show or a cruise in to be able to have fun in your car. And guys are getting out there and, and, and having great fun in their classic cars on their own. So, yeah, absolutely. And this quarantine cruise in Huntington Beach is huge. And basically, they're just doing a social distance serpentine of cars yeah. around the city. And that seems to be uh, just really blowing up. So, I think we'll see more of these kinds of solutions yeah. where it's a rolling car show, basically. Yeah. There's nothing safer than to being in a car with your family. So, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's probably more fun than being in, in with your family in the house. That's true. So, tell us about your own car collection and the cars that you like to get out on the road. Uh, I've seen a couple of pictures on your social media mm -hmm. page, which is really cool. You got some interesting 
cars. I, I think I've seen a, a VW 61 bus with 21 windows. And I, yep. I believe you also have a Mustang stage three Roush. Yep. So, but, but, you know, that's based on what I saw. So why don't you tell us about the cars in your car collection? Yeah. So, you know, I, I have a very kind of eclectic car collection. I, I enjoy modern performance vehicles. So even my, for instance, my 32 uh, High Boy Roadster has got all LS engine transmission rear end equipment in it. Uh, although exteriorly, it looks like a 32 hot rod that was built in the 50s. Uh, that's the style of vehicle that I like. All the way up to, as, as you mentioned, uh, a new Roush uh, Stage 3 one of one, you know, Jack Roush Jr. did a great job and built a one of one Gulf Livery uh, Mustang for me and a, just a phenomenal car. I, I've got it in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee and, and drive it uh, back and forth to work. It's a, it's a great car to, uh, to get out there. It's just a really super fun car uh, to drive. I've got some uh, restored vehicles as well. I have a 1970 GTO Judge. It was a 44,000 original mile car that was had a nut and bolt restoration. It originally was going to be a project for my son and I, so Jay, uh, something for you and your dad to do with that Corvair. But yeah. my son and I were going to do it. But as I was doing some investigating on the car that I purchased from a buddy in Hawaii, I found out that, you know, the engine and transmission and the rear end were all matching numbers, the date codes on the rims, the, the carburetor tag, the distributor tag, the, the casting numbers on the block, on the cylinder heads were all matching. I thought, wow, this is too important of a car for me and Tim to do in the garage. So uh, Bodie Stroud uh, did a, a great job of restoring that on that show, American Restoration. It so uh, he did a frame off uh, nut and bolt restoration. I just did a beautiful job and it's sitting in the showroom in, in Los Angeles. I drive it every chance I get when I uh, get down to LA. So you know, so I like some hot rods, some modern performance cars, and some restored classic cars. It kind of runs that gamut. And of course, as you mentioned, my most recent acquisition is that 61, 21 window VW bus, Beautiful. which is just the funnest thing in the world for me to drive. I pile my kids in there, my grand, my brand new grandson in there, and we just have a blast cruising along the beach. What a beautiful, beautiful build that is. And yeah. You know, here come the judge, right? I mean, uh, Jason and I have talked about that car because it's um, it, it's almost iconic of yeah. that late 60s, early 70s when um, marketing was using some very imaginative colors, imagery, uh, uh, just cars, just there was no boundaries uh, for car design and car colors, especially with Mopar and all that they had going on in Pontiac as a performance yeah. division of General Motors. They're, they're, it just seemed like every year uh, they were taking it to the next level, taking it to the next level. And 1970 was the pinnacle right, yeah, for, the, for the muscle car. Yeah, you know, I, I so when you look at the 70 Camaro Z28 with the DZ302 engines in it, and of course the GTO judges, the Cutlass, I mean, there was so many car after car after car uh, that came out of that era that, uh, yeah. really made it special and kind of tying that back into how I started in this industry at my dad's gas station. That was the era that I worked at that, my dad's gas station. And, you know, Thank back you. then, not only did we pump the gas, but we checked your oil, we put air in the tires and I got to see all these cool engine packages in all of these cars. And, you know, I made sure that I read and memorized, oh, this is a 375 horsepower, 396. <laughs> So it had these better cylinder, it had open chamber cylinder heads instead of closed chamber and had these aluminum intake manifolds. So it really <laughs> gave me that great foundation of being kind of a car guy, or actually probably a car nut. So you could, you could explain air induction on a LS6 Chevelle to anybody if they wanted to know, right? I, mean, I they sure can. The neatest thing in the world is at the Mecham auction in Indy, they have three uh, I mean, just unbelievable examples of LS6 power plants. They have an LS6 uh, powered Corvette, uh, LS6 powered Chevelle, and an LS6 powered Del Camino there. So uh, just a great uh, reminder and hearkening back to my days at the gas station. Wow. What a great, what a great growing experience. Um, you know, and I, I think sometimes we never know how we got where we are, but I'm going to guess that that gas station experience with your father has a lot to do with where you are today. Yeah, that, that, those formative years of, of being able to work with my father, like Jay gets to work with you on a, on a regular basis, it's both good and bad, I'll be honest. Right. 
Uh, right. But what it really taught me is the, the value of hard work. It taught me the value of building relationships with your community and with your customers. And it, and it really taught me the value of deeply understanding what you're doing. I mean, he really understood. Because back then, you didn't pull the starter off, put a new one in, or put a rebuilt one in. You right. pulled the starter off, you took it apart, you fixed it, and then you put it back on. And uh, so that ability for him to be able to do that and teach me those things and really serve the community that he was in uh, was something that, that really uh, was, uh, made a very deep impression on me and uh, probably is why I'm so involved in SEMA and willing to volunteer my time to be able to help our community. And uh, you know, I, I remember a little bit of a sad story, but at his funeral, I had so many people coming up to me and saying, you don't know me? I haven't seen your dad in 20 years, but I got to tell you, he used to fix the flat tires on my bicycles for free. He used to, <laughs> when my parents got laid off, he used to give them gas for free. No you know, and all of these stories just came one after the other. So really, uh, I, I think that became the kind of the bedrock and the foundation of who I am. Wow. Yeah, well, it sounds like a wonderful man. I mean, we all miss our fathers, but we learn so much from them and uh, they, they really shape our lives. That's Absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're about to wrap up, but Wade, where can folks learn more about um, both legendary companies as well as uh, you or reach out to you and say hi on, you know, some of your social media properties or, or whatever? Yeah, that, that's, that's very easy uh, for Coker Tire. It's CokerTire.com. And if you're interested in the great race at all, if you're interested in maybe participating or just learning a little bit more uh, about what it does, is go to GreatRace.com. Um, you know, at both of those sites are, are our other companies. So you'll be able to find Wheel of Antiques. And, you know, Wheel of Antiques is, a, you know, a great small company based out of Los Angeles, California. We're one of the few companies that actually uses American steel. And 100% of the wheels that Wheel of Antiques manufactures are made right here in the USA with right. American steel. So, you know, hey, support American business. You know, support, uh, you know, uh, a small business uh, in that uh, wheel of antiques business is a great thing. And, you know, most of our competitors, a lot of those components or even the whole wheel is sourced in China. And right. this is something you can really understand is a high quality product built by American craftsmen that, uh, you know, they're adding so much horsepower nowadays to all of these muscle cars. It's right. really important that you have a high quality wheel. Every wheel of antiques wheel is load tested beyond the original factory specifications because we're hot rodders. Yeah, we, we know that uh, people are hot riding these cars. So we want to make sure that that's a safe wheel for your family to be in the same way Coker Tires is a safe tire. Um, my Instagram handle is Car Guy Adventures. So uh, please uh, follow along with Car Guy Adventures. I, I get the great privilege of, uh, you know, I, I always tell our, our teams that, wow, we get to do things that people pay a lot of money. <laughs> to, to be able to do and we get to do them and get paid to do it so i think that's my privilege that i get paid to do something that i love to do so i want to make sure that i share it so car guy adventures on instagram or you can follow wade kawasaki on uh, facebook and uh, if you're a car guy I'll, I'll accept your your request and uh, you can follow us along uh, on there as well it's my great privilege to be able to share those pictures and videos and things that are going around all around the world that this Western culture has infected, whether it's Moscow or Sao Paulo, Brazil, or Tokyo, Japan, uh, Munich, Germany, this American car culture has infiltrated all of that. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought that up before we close. We had a gentleman on here that was, uh, his name is Klaus, and he's responsible for the, the Mustang Club. And he's the, is it the CEO, was that his title, Jay, of the Mustang Club? Yeah. And, um, we're like, you know, why is he in Germany? What's going on? So we had him as a guest and this Mustang club is just, there's um, clubs all over the world yeah. and it's huge. The Mustang club is huge in Germany and yeah. other countries. And we're going, just, you know, it's so phenomenal what um, has happened in this car scene. You would only expect Ferraris in Europe, right? And right. American classics over here at, that's just not the case. So no, really, maybe SoCal has had a lot of influence early on and, and continues, whether it's Detroit or SoCal, to influence even the rest of the world, to your point. 
Oh yeah, SoCal definitely has influenced the rest of the world. I had a, you know, not only to have access growing up in Gardena to the Strand, right, along Hermosa and Manhattan Beach, but uh, also the first service center where I worked at as a counterman at a speed shop was on Van Nuys Boulevard in the Valley. So just great places to cruise, great places to show off your car. And that has definitely infected the car culture around the world. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And they, of course, back then they did stuff like turning the local uh, air strip into a drag strip, uh, Lions, right? I think that's their story. So, you know, a necessity is the mother of invention uh, sometimes in this car world, it's incredible. Oh yeah, and out in the valley, you had Harry Hand Grenade Hilbler running the uh, racetrack and driving his front front uh, motor dragster. Yeah, we we've got uh, you know a lot of history in Southern California, both at the dry lakes and at the uh, drag strips. Yeah, we got to get there, Jay. Right off to Bonneville we go. So uh, wait, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you for joining us today. That was a great ride. Uh, we feel better now that we're on American made wheels and tires and the pandemic has reminded us how fragile our supply chain is and that yep. we need to do everything we can uh, moving forward uh, to, to buy and, and uh, support our American businesses like legendary companies. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And, and uh, you know, guys, thank you for what you do. Uh, you know, being involved in the industry, but giving back to the industry like you do here to, you know, just keep the enthusiasm high to bring new people into our industry. It's, it's just great. So appreciate all you do and, and the business that you're in and look forward to seeing you at the SEMA show. Awesome. Well, thanks, you know Wade. Mean, uh, we uh, really appreciate you. Uh, again, you were listening to Wade Kawasaki, um, great businessman behind legendary companies. Um, thank you so much for listening here on the SoCal car scene podcast. Uh, correction. I said last week was our 25th episode, but actually this is actually our 25th episode. So we made it, uh, this far. Wow. I mean, I can't believe we, we are on our way to, uh, numerous episodes and we look forward to giving you more episodes in the future. Uh, just remember that this show does come out, um, every Friday at 6 PM. So. Uh, make sure you set your schedules either to your YouTube uh, channel or to uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to, such as Spotify or Stitcher or Google Play. And you can also check out other podcasts on our media page at SoCalCarStorage.com forward slash media. And you can check out all the episodes on YouTube by following and subscribing to the SoCal Car Scene page. And in fact, if you just go down below and hit that little button that says subscribe, it goes a long way to helping us providing more content to you in the future. So thanks so much for joining Wade and everybody out there in Carland and happy driving.